Definitely. Um, I'll take him to you, Yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you look like, yeah. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I've dabbled in a bit of philosophy, done a bit of religious studies, right. and um, yeah, I, I just find philosophy and religion yeah. both fascinating. Um, you've got certain arguments of, of certain philosophers of the past. I mean, Descartes, in, yeah. in, when it comes to kind of he was something else, wasn't he? He really was, but I really I found that when it comes to Descartes, his um, because they they say he's somewhat the father of rationalism because of his um yeah, like yeah yeah because of his th there was a thought experiment that he did and which i come across some people in the park they say you know we're skeptical we're skeptical that you know even i exist that you exist or whatnot well i mean that's a valid position to take up you know i'm yeah. not saying it's necessarily true but yeah. some people can argue it very well um, of, um um, but the chap, yes, I mean Descartes, um, he did big work in actual geometry, he actually did some amazing <laughs> Yeah, he did, yeah, he some, did. Some amazing, uh, but which I think helped Newton. Uh, um, Newton read Descartes you know, mm. carefully, but there again, he also read all the uh, classics you know, mm. and the you know, mathematics. But what bothers me about modern day university is that in order to, uh, but we used to have something here called the uh, several liberal arts. Have okay. you heard of it? I haven't, no. Well, um, but, the, um, but the whole of the um, European civilization after the Greeks was based upon the several liberal arts, mm. which you started studying when you were seven or eight. Right. And it carried you off into university. You did things like uh, uh, geometry, music, Grammar is mm. very important. Mm -hmm. um, um, grammar and, uh, and arithmetic and um, logic were the first to be taught uh, because you can't be logical unless your foundations uh, um, in grammar mm. um, are correct. Mm. Um, if you can't construct a, a sentence, yeah, <laughs> yeah. A, a semantic and correct sentence. That's right. But then you can't put a, you can't put together a logical argument. That's right. Now, when everybody used to go to university and he did things like philosophy and even English, you had to do a course in um, um, about logic. Mm. It was a compulsory unit. Yeah. But mind you, 50, 60 years ago, people that went to universities were, were quite few. Yeah. And quite small. So, it's, um, so the quality of the average student was very high because it was, because it was bloody hard to get in. Yeah, yeah. Now you've got what? I mean, what, um, um, how many go now? One in three, one in four. Mm. And you can't do that unless you lower the standard. That's right. Yeah. And that's what they've done. So they've dumped everything down. Uh, but from secondary education to tertiary education, it's all been dumbed down. Mm. And up to I now, agree. Up to now, the sciences and engineering were safe, mm. but now even they've been infiltrated by the new age lefty philosophy. Yes. You know, um, uh, um, um, I, mean, I went to Polytechnic back in the 70s, and, and it was a part-time degree in those days, because I was an apprentice and the first well, um, as you know, it's British Telegram. So they, they used to give us one day off a week to, to go to Poly and uh, get mm. a degree over about three and a half years wow. part time. Mm. It was uh, about one day a week um, from nine in the morning till nine at night, mm. half night, which you had your nap. Which is fun when you're there. Yeah. But, uh, it, but even then it was bloody hard. You know? But if you go back before the war, I mean, both universities, um, what were like Oxford or Cambridge, they were yeah. very, very selective. Only a few got in. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, um, I'm not sure about anywhere else, but certainly in the uh, west of Europe, they've been dumbing down for a long time. Oh, for sure. The education yeah. system is not where, not where it used to be. Um, Many of, of the yeah. agenda is. But there's another alternative agenda going on. That's right. Which if you talk to people, yeah. they don't want to hear. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they don't want to know anything. You know? Yeah. 
But I mean, they're they're following another philosophy, which is was that hear no evil, see no evil. I mean, um, it's that it's what cats do, isn't it? I think cats are either little babies, which when they see something they don't like, they just close their eyes. Yes. Thinking that just because I've closed my eyes and I can't see it, therefore it doesn't exist. So they're hoping that it would just go away, but um, it's just compounding the problem. I think. The, the f- yeah, the few people speaking out, the few people um, that are actually challenging the norms. It's because you know what I think. Um, personally, I think that you know the more you go away from moral anchorage, mm. the more you think that morality is subjective. Mm. The more people become individualistic, and when you become individualistic then rather than having a community you've got pockets within a community each pocket is trying to serve its own interest and yes. that has become more fragmented yes. with each individual being an island um, which i think even in um, the uk we just when i just get out of london i just drive up a little bit just the sense of community in fact forget driving up just go east to wales the sense of community that's in wales it's true, it's very good. It's uh, um, but unfortunately, once you have a system based upon... Now, look, I believe in the free market. I, I mean, I really do. But it yeah. has to be free and it has to be um, controlled. You know? yeah. Otherwise, they'll just pursue profit at the expense of everybody else. That's right. Which is part of human nature. Of know? course. That's what people do. You know? So you have to have a strong community in order to keep that under control. But unfortunately, like I was saying to in the West, and I possibly, uh, possibly even outside of this, the uh, governments are, are really dumbing everything down to, um, uh, to stop that. Um, but they're taking away our ability to uh, control that society. Yeah. I mean, the state has got far too much power, power that, that was never given to it, it was just taken. It's funny you mention that because there's a, a German philosopher called Theodor Adorno. Yes. And he said exactly what you just um, said, um, but he just he gave the case study of magazines, movies, radio. He says they distract us from two things: number one, from getting to know our purpose, and number two, from from being able to instill political change. The thing was, he was part of the Frankfurt School, wasn't he? Right very much so. And of course those people aren't really in our interest anyway because they're all Marxists. Right? Yeah, yeah. And they believe in the su- and they always believe in the su- supreme power of the government basically yeah. to impose its will. Yeah. Which is which is why I like the American Constitution. Mm. Uh, which 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 uh, 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 but which give it, which recognizes the people have the right to self defence mm. and to be armed. Yes. Also to keep their government under under control because they're armed. Yeah. But of course, over the past hundred years, with total commercialization, people have uh, but they've forgotten their basic rights. That's right. And their responsibilities too. I think G.K. Chesterton Chesterton yes, I, said. I know him. I don't know much about him, but I know of him. But I think I'm in the I'm in the same boat as you. There, there was one quote of his that really kind of stands out. He says, "God being dead." Um, doesn't imply that there is no God. It just means that people will take anything and everything as a God. Um, it could be, I mean, uh, I'm sure you know some people, they go to work, they make that their purpose. They make yeah. that their be all and end all. But some work very, very creative and interesting, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, as an engineer, um, I didn't get a great degree. I, I just about got through it. Hey, degrees are overrated anyway, you know. Well, <laughs> Um, um, well, at the time, I mean, like when you're young, what you want to do is go out and have fun. That's it's right. Mm. Uh, but had I put, had I studied properly, mm. maybe I could have done something more creative and interesting. Mm. Uh, but it was in the work sphere, you know. So I actually regret it now. But there again, I've got a good pension, mm. I'm tired. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't have to work very hard. <laughs> like you know what the post is. Like, so <laughs> very easy guy. Yeah. But at the same time, I did, I sort of did sacrifice my, uh, my life, you know, mm. you know and, and it was a big mistake, you know. Mm. Uh, because as an individual, you, you have to have purpose, uh, but you, you, you must be doing something creative. That's right. You know, which most people aren't given the opportunity. You know, most people do boring jobs. Yeah. Incredibly. 
dog. That's why you know I, I think it's important for the for for the youngsters, for the young generation to, to speak to the elder generation, to to learn from their mistakes. This whole I have to reinvent the cycle, I think is just it's restricting progress. Some of the older generation. Yeah, of course, of course. I mean most of the older I mean most of my generation are completely delusional. You know, they didn't see you know, like, I still go out to see what you do, you know, but, yeah. I mean, but, um, but most people live for that. You know? Yeah, 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 and true. it can take you over. You That's know? right. It, um, I mean, there's something nice about sitting in the pub and in the paper, having a chat. There's something communal about the whole thing, and it is nice, but but in some ways it does, um, it does tend to take away your sense of um, purpose. It does. You'd be surprised, though. Uh, to, to be honest, like, um, what's your ballpark figure of your age? I'm 68. 68. Yeah. So the prophet peace be upon him, he he died when he was 63. Who's sorry? The the prophet Muhammad. Oh yeah, he yeah. Died, he, um, which I mean, like, which for the time was probably quite old. Right? Exactly, but. The, the fact that, you know, a lot of people, like the, his successor was um, around his age. Yeah. Um, so, th I do believe there's some credence to you're only as old as you feel. Um, although some people... Well, some of, you know, yeah. of course, of course. And, and as you go, I think the more experience you get, you become definitely a, um, an asset. I'd say you become an asset. The way the way society unfortunately treats people with experience, I don't think that's reflective of say previous societies that that would respect elders. For example, even in the Islamic religion, they say if an older person comes, you know, you, you have to treat them like your father, pretty much. Yeah, um, it's a good philosophy. And and definitely, it's I've I've seen it needed now more than ever because I was a school teacher. For, for a short while, about six years, and I could see, <laughs> yeah, it was like I could see the, the holes in the narrative in the sense that, you know, what, what the kids were missing and what the kids needed, and I obviously had to go through a curriculum and I was constantly at odds with it, unhappy with, I mean, why aren't we talking about this, why aren't we talking about that, because is it, there, there are a few fundamental things that kids do need to learn from a small age, and just repeating stuff again and again is, I don't think is helpful. But I mean, that's 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 something else. But well, there's something you should do, and that is to look in the, into the uh, several liberal arts, which is what European education system used to be based on. Mm. He used to do the uh, first three, the um, trivium, trivium. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. It, it means three anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and when you did the other four, yeah. And then after you finish the. Uh, you then were able to go to university, and they just start university younger. Mm. I mean, but they could start when they were 16 or even wow. 15. So, you know, I mean, um, um, and the actual standards for the few, admittedly, yeah. given that system was very good, excellent, mm. and it worked. The first thing is the government did to get rid of that, mm. and to do in the modern secondary school. I, mean, I went to a secondary modern school. I didn't get through my 11 plus, so I was spent 11 plus was, was difficult, I, even I remember struggling as well. I took a bit too young, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I did it, I mean, it was back in the 60s. And um, so I got to a Sunday model. But at the same time, Sunday modern schools were superior to any mm. kind of I mean, like, he used to have work, fully kitted out to uh, 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 metal. Metal work, I've got lathes, millimeters of cheese, forges. Mm. You know, I'm certainly kids with two hands at hands. Wow. To make things I love that. Woodwork, full range of tools, completely fully stocked. Fantastic. Now, what they have, what they're going to keep, they have a pair of scissors and they've got a cardboard. <laughs> and that's supposed to teach them mechanical skills. <laughs> that's, so tr that's so nonsense. true. That's so true. And none of this is done by accident. Mm. It's all planned, um, but to make people dependent and even useless. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and this is the sinister plan. I mean, to make them part of the, the, the system, isn't it? It's the post-industrial revolution. You didn't want independent thinkers. You just wanted someone that could fit within the supply chain, do their job, oh, yeah, not question, 
and be too busy, be entertained, you know, breads and circuses, yeah. be entertained to such a degree. Circus, you just, yeah, 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 you just keep your mouth closed. Just And it's worked beautifully. It really has. Even people with good degrees still walk around closed-minded. That's right. And I can't believe that. Hey, look, you know, uh, um, uh, read this, um, and, and you can even show them something written yeah. by the government itself. Yes. And they don't want to know. Uh, yeah. They won't look at it. Mm. Uh, and these are bloody modern, modern graduates. Yeah. Uh, to, to, to be honest, it's like even coming across a, a guy with a PhD. I mean, somebody with a PhD, he has a, he has a PhD in a, in, in a specific field. Yeah. Back in the days, you know, when you had something like a PhD, to get PhD and specialism in one thing, they were called polymaths. Yeah, polymaths. Even even in the um, Spain, when Spain was ruled um, by the Muslim Empire, they were you had Khawarizmi, Ibn Sina, Kindi. These guys were giants. They 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 were polymaths. I mean, even here, I mean, you had Aristotle, Plato. These guys had opinions like credible opinions when it came to various aspects of our but life. The thing was you were taught the foundations of thought. Oh, for sure. Um, and you were taught logic, Aristotelian logic, basically. That's yes. What still, still taught it. That's right. But you had to do grammar first. Of course. Because you had to know how to construct a sentence. Yes. And if you haven't got that level of, of understanding of your grammar, when you're screwed big time because you can't think in a coherent way. That's right. And I'm spending my time going back retrospectively to actually study the things that in Germany that I should remember, you know, mm, you, know mm. like, um, you know, silly things, I mean, I mean, you know, really, I mean, trivial things, but I should know them, you know. You know yeah, I, I think it depends where you use them. For example, if you look at modus ponens, knowing if, then, um, th these sorts of things, they, they may seem trivial, but if you don't understand what they imply or what they mean, I mean, you, you won't be able to apply logic su successfully. And it's all based upon um, Aristotle's categories in his book. That's right. It's all based on that. All yes. that I mean, that man you saw. But if you try and read that bloody thing, yeah. it's so confusing and badly written. Yeah. I mean, I mean um, uh, I mean, the guy couldn't have written any worse, you know, than the way he did. It's such a confusing book to read. But you really need someone there that's, that's a master that can take you through it. I think, you know, even when um, pe people talk about the, um, the, the Ihya, there's a book written by Al-Ghazali, who is credited with the cosmological argument, which also yeah. has a syllogism as well. Uh, when he talks about the incoherence of the philosophers, I mean, I'd use the same sentiment like yourself. It's so difficult to read, and but people say that you have to have a certain background of the the incoherence of the philosophers at that time for you to understand that okay, this is because a lot of things sometimes they're written shorthand, yeah, yeah, and yeah, and the yeah. thing is, that in order for you to understand what that shorthand is, you have to know about the historical context, you have to know about grammar usage at that time, yeah. prose usage at that time. Yeah. And it really becomes difficult to decipher. I mean, certain f philosophical books, they, they just, especially Nietzsche. Nietzsche, yeah. You know what they said about him? They said that later, he was so ill that the doctor said, you shouldn't be writing. If you feel compelled to write, don't write more than, say, 20 minutes. So that's why when he would be traveling, he would have 20 minute bursts of just writing. Because his health was significantly deteriorating. Yes. Yes. So, but when people read it, they read it thinking it's some continuous prose because you're not going to get, okay, that was 20 minutes at that time when Nietzsche yeah. was going through this. And that. again, I guess it's like certain verses of scripture as well. You, you need context when it comes to something that was written back in the days. But, but the thing is, where is this leadership going to come from? I'm like, I'm like, where are these people that can you sit down with us? I look at Aristotle, for example, yeah. and his logic and all the rest of it, and take us through it in a coherent way. Um, I've tried looking at YouTube, you know, and you find the old chap on there that explains it. But even that's not brilliant, I mean, even that's confusing to some degree. Yeah. I mean, yeah. um, um, these treaties just don't really exist, I don't see. 
um, because they can't simplify it enough for the average man to, to comprehend it. Uh, you know. There's there's somebody that whose whose books I think I find fascinating. There's somebody called Prince Ghazi of Jordan. <laughs> So the thing with him is he studied Western philosophy as well, but he, stand, he studied religious philosophy as well. Um, and, and the way he weaves between the two, picking up principles that we can apply in our daily life, uh, that, that's why I like his stuff, because it's, it's quite pertinent to the issues that we're going, yeah. that that's happening today. For example, yeah. he poses a question. He says, what's happiness? What is happiness? Yeah. Well, what would you say in your understanding of happiness? It sounds a bit like a thing that Socrates would have said, wouldn't it? All this will happen. And then he would destroy everybody's definition of it. Destroy it away. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. No. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's what he's famous for. He is the Socratic it? method. Asking questions that he knew most people yeah. couldn't answer. That's right. I've been, I've been making it look silly. You know? That's right. But, but, I mean, yes, I, mean, I, I take the point. Um, trying to pin people down. <laughs> Um, what's that method? Actually no, like with him, the Socratic method is is there for a purpose to, to, to break down certain people that are very staunch in their views. But what what he does in his book, What is Happiness, is he actually goes through what happiness is not, what happiness could be, and what happiness is. He actually gives a conclusion. Okay, so, so he comes to a conclusion. He does, he does, he does. Um, Socrates never really comes to a conclusion. Exactly. He just tells you what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which, which sometimes can be quite <laughs> jarring, because uh, really? yeah, because when it's very disturbing. especially when somebody's, you know, at a very difficult part of their life, maybe their wife's left them, maybe they've lost their job. I should be so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> She's still yeah. around, yeah. <laughs> That's no, fantastic. But, um, but sometimes maybe, I mean, maybe people are, uh, are sensible with that, like in avoiding these questions because they know they haven't got the ability to talk to uh, But maybe they're doing the right thing, um, but for their own um, psychological um, stability. Yeah. The question it can send you boot. It can, it can. Yeah. But, but, but definitely stuff to do with purpose, like, like we've highlighted, is so integral. Yeah. Um, without purpose, uh, you just you just um, a yeah, directionless vehicle. Yeah, you, you, you need to have an objective. You need to have a goal. Even in business, Simon Sinek's written a book called What's Your Why. Even in business, he goes to CEOs and he tells them, "Look, you need, you need to have you, your staff need to have a why. You need to have a why. There needs to be purpose, and that purpose can't just be materialistic. That 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 can't just be mere profit." accumulating and and that's what that's what Jim Carrey said he said I wish people aren't and, and became famous earned wealth to realize that that's not that that's not what's going to bring you happiness no but it helps it uh, certainly does <laughs> oh for sure but you know uh, you, you've probably seen a sitcom Only Fools and Horses yes, yes. A, a fantastic just classic in British sitcom but what really stands out to me is right at the end where Del Boy and Rodney are standing in the Nelson Mandela house yeah. and there's no furniture there and Del Boy goes, what do I do now? Yes. What do I do now? It was the journey. It was the action. It, it was literally the steps that, that made life worth living and that's what was exciting. Now that we've reached here, what do we do now, bruv? <laughs> That's what he says, and life to go. It's been, oh. uh, like it's been lovely chat. Yeah, no, likewise, likewise. Yeah, take care, take care, bye. Oh, well, salam. I just want to say you're doing a very good job. We Thank see you, you on bro. YouTube all the time. Oh, my uh, The brother came all the way from Halifax. Oh. He's been saying it for a few days. Oh, At the bank, yeah? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should have gone to Santander. <laughs> yeah, he said he wants to come and see Speaker's Corner. I said, let's come. It's my first time as well. And inshallah, we've just made it in the nick of time. And we saw one of our favorites. Alhamdulillah. Keep Alhamdulillah. on doing a good job. No, Jazakallah. Yeah. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet other brothers to come here. Like, uh, Ali uh, should be coming today. Hijab, not so, but Hisha, um, Hashim. Hashim and so they should be coming a bit later on. Shamsi yeah. and. Uh, no. Shamsi? I don't know about yeah. Shamsi now. I don't know. I don't know. When did you get here? Just I got here about half an hour ago. 
Yeah. yeah. About two hours ago, but still not getting quite here. Yeah, no, no, no. Don't come earlier than 1.30. Yeah. So yeah. we went to a place where we got salam and we came back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome, salam wa Salam wa rahmatullah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've been watching your channel for about five or six years now. Ah, oh, mashallah. Uh, we need to take a picture then, brother. Oh, we need so to take a, yeah, yeah. We need to take a picture. Thank you so much, Some people there because I know you come from far. You got the phone. I got the hint. <laughs> I got the hint. Thank you so much. My pleasure, brother. So nice My to pleasure. You. My pleasure. We're going to stick around for a couple of hours and listen to some more discussion. Excellent. Yeah, inshallah, you learn something and it's of, it's of benefit, inshallah. Take care, brother. Inshallah, inshallah, salam. Salam alaikum. Alhamdulillah. How are you? I'm very well. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah. How are you?